so I managed to, to, to make it as easy to set up as, so it's more easy to set up a new BTC Pay node than it is to open an account on an exchange. So I worked a lot to make hosting your own payment pro processor with your own full node easy because like full node sucks. Uh, it's very hard to set up. So like I think it was the most immediate problem of Bitcoin after B2X. Uh, so I, the title of my talk was like BTC Pay pick your own uh, trust, trust level. But actually what I want to explain is more why than this. Uh, I just want you to understand how this easy setup works uh, because actually the nice thing about BTC Pay is that it's, everything is open source. Uh, so if you understand how it works, then you can use it for your own purposes and even review what I, what I did and change it uh, specific to your need. Uh, so that's what I, I, I will work on. Uh, so I'm working, like he, uh, like he said, at, uh, in Tokyo with DigiLab and also for Metaco. And I'm the uh, .NET, uh, .NET fanboy. Ah, this one doesn't work. So yeah, I assume you know this. You, you know what is BTC Pay. So it's a kind of DevOps-oriented talk, uh, so a bit technical. And um, the reason, the reason why it's very easy to set up BTC Pay is because I'm relying uh, on Docker. And the reason I decided to rely on Docker is that I come from Windows World, and when I start using Bitcoin, basically, you know, the Bitcoin, most people are, are Linux users. And so I needed to learn about that. And one of the first problems I saw with Linux is that you are never, uh, for setting up everything, you need pa page and page of documentations. Uh, because like for one distribution, you need to use this command line for another, this other command line. So it's a mess. So I decided to just put everything on Docker and that you, you can just run it everywhere. Uh, so the goal of this talk is that after you understand how it works, you can focus if you want to fork. Okay, this is very important. Um, so you can take full advantage of B BTC Pay server flexibility. And also it's for shilling Docker because I love, I love Docker and Docker is awesome and my life changed with Docker. <laughs> so overview. So maybe some of you saw, saw some video to set, it up, to set up BTC Pay. So basically you can very easily make a very simple UI on top of it that set things up for you. But at the end of the day, what's happening behind the scene, if you have your own Linux server, like it's those four lines of code are enough for setting up BTC Pay. So like you clone one repository, you uh, go to this repository, you set up, you say, okay, my server has this DNS name. So make sure that your DNS is properly set up. And then you run this script. And automatically, it works. If your server is accessible on internet, here what you have, you have like, a BTC Pay uh, Docker Compose that is set up, and basically on it you have BTC Pay that is set up. Uh, NB Explorer is like what I'm using for tracking your wallets and like payments. You have Bitcoin Core that is set up. You have your PostgreSQL that is set up. You have a reverse proxy that is set up and uh, configured with Let's Encrypt, which means that automatically you have HTTPS uh, configured. It just worked out of the box. You don't have to do anything. And uh, then imagine that you have a WooCommerce on some other server. You can easily use the plugin to connect to your BTC Pay server for accepting Bitcoin payments. So like once again, four lines of code. It's magic. Um, now imagine that you want to add several altcoin. You know, this green light, this green part, like it's what I just added. So if you want to add Litecoin, Dogecoin, Bitcoin Gold, uh, whatever shitcoin that you want, uh, it's, it's just one line, and then you just set it, you just run the setup and it works. And you have something like this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's kind of, I made it very easy. Uh, 
And the reason why there is so many shitcoins supported is basically I don't have to do anything by myself. Like shitcoiners implement shitcoin support by themselves. So like on my side, it's like no, no, no real work on this. Uh, I will send you the slide later if you want. <laughs> uh, then imagine that you want to accept Lightning payments for your e-store. Then actually, the, it's only one line. Like. BTC pay gen lining, C lining, for example, you can put LND. Uh, long time ago, I tried to do Eclair, but Eclair like one picture, so uh, it was notification of payments. Uh, I actually, I think it's still not implemented, uh, but it will come la later. Uh, but basically, if you'd say, okay, I want lining, then in your Docker Compose, you have lining set up. So like, if you say, I, I want C lining, automatically you will have C lining set up with lining charge. Uh, and Spark wallets. So like you have a wallet re ready to use. And like, as I said, it's like one line to add this. Uh, then imagine, so some of you may, may have seen like a new project building upon BTC Pay. For example, is Lib, Lib Patron. It's kind of like Patreon, but for Bitcoin, uh, developed by another developer, Jeff. Uh, so same thing, if you want Lib Patron, it's like one line. If you want to add WooCommerce inside your Docker Compose, it's one line. And then if you want to add some plugins, it's like one line as well. So you add this and like basically you have like the plugin. So this picture is Jeff, like it's the developer that did Lib Patron. He didn't decide on a logo yet, so I just put his face. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's basically that simple. Uh, so it's quite cool because it's quite, I will explain you how it works under the, the hood. So like you can make your own plugins and like, you know, start burning on top of BTC Pay and have it easily deployed. So it's quite simple. Uh, it supports shitcoin. And um, yeah, and third party like, like Jeff can easily build your own like plugin on top of it uh, very easily. What is not cool is that it's not flexible enough. So some people, uh, for example, instead of Bitcoin Core, they want to run a Bitcoin Note uh, from Luke, maybe. Uh, so you will have to understand how it works if you want to change it. Uh, some people will say it's a bad point that it supports shitcoin by, because I'm encouraging fraud. So like some people don't like it. Uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, and one of the problem is that you trust me as the owner of BTC Pay Server Docker repo. Okay, the, the, this is a problem. I have access to the repo, and so I, I could potentially push malicious changes. So it's a problem as well. Uh, so, yeah, I, I have lots of you know contention. Like, oh, can you? Somebody asked me to support Shitcoin 2.0, and then like lots of angry people say, oh, yeah, you should not push Shitcoins. Uh, recently, one of our developers in BTC Pay wanted to, that developed a crowdfunding feature in BTC Pay, wanted to uh, try to use the crowdfunding feature to add support of Ethereum, and like there was lots of you know fights on the community. Oh, okay, how can you dare do this? So basically, there is kind of like, you know, some people that want different feature in BTC Pay or want to remove features from BTC Pay, and it's perfectly fine. Uh, in the main repo. Sheet coins are okay, like as long as we don't, you know, to, uh, spend time ourselves as developer of BTC Pay to, to debug your stuff, it's okay. Uh, as long as it's not controversial because I want to spend time coding instead of fighting, uh, it's okay as well. And uh, if you want a sheet coin yourself, you have to do a bunch of integration. So inside my library and Bitcoin, inside NBX Pro, inside BTC Pay, then you need to dockerize your node software uh, and then you need to integrate to BTC Pay Docker and then maintain yourself. So basically, if you have your own Litecoin, you do the work by yourself. Like, I, I won't help uh, except by documentation, basically. And you are responsible to fix what is broken. And like, it's very important as BTC Pay developer, like we are Bitcoiner first, and we test only on Bitcoin. If, it breaks some, if we do a change that breaks something on a, another Litecoin, we don't really care, okay? So if it's, you're not happy with it, then this is Bitcoin, like go fork yourself. <laughs> so the rule, like, like what I, I explained basically, when, 
the, when you start using BTC, deploy BTCP on your server, you just git clone some link you know, on the top, like my, my repo. So you, you can just fork this repo. So I just give you the command line here. It's like git clone and the repo, and then you can fork it. Um, so until here, is there any question? It's not over, but like there's many things on which I will pass, pass on. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, the, the question is was, uh, is it a requirement uh, to use Docker for using BTCP? Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, so do you need to have Docker container engine running on your node before you do the git clone, or it's part of the installation process oh, no, itself? The, no, 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 you, so the BTCP, the BTCP setup.sh will install Docker for you. I will, I will go into detail later in this slide to explain better in what happened. Anyone else, questions? Yeah. So there's uh, lots of storage needed probably if you run uh, all these chains. This is all on one box and I will have yeah, to provide so that storage. Yeah, you, you, you can prune it. So like if you prune it, basically you can, so if you use Lightning, so if you don't use Lightning, you can prune up to five gigabytes, actually, very easily. Uh, if you want Lightning, it's, I, I advise to prune to around 50 gigabytes, then it just works, you know. If you have, if you have like 10 cheat coins, then of course you need like bigger machine. So like that's kind of disincentive to use lots of cheat coin. In general, people just use Bitcoin because like it makes the server more stable. Is there any way to um, distribute uh, the different chains to different uh, machines? Uh, so it's relying on, on Docker. So like uh, with Docker Swarm, I guess you can do it. Uh, but I don't really know how Docker Swarm works myself, so. So you have not thought about using Kubernetes or anything like that? Uh, which one? Kubernetes or anything like that? Uh, no, not yet. Because si simply I, I'm Bitcoiner, so I only code stuff that I use myself, and like because I don't use shitcoins, uh, I, I, I didn't spend time working on Kubernetes, for example. Okay. So I will go a bit into the details of how this magic works. Like, how is it so simple to install by yourself? So like, imagine that you, are, you want your, so lots of people already fork BTC Pay Docker. Uh, for example, LTC Pay, they did a fork and they customized their, their page. There is BTC Pay Jungle at, as well that forked. Uh, so I, I explain how it works so you can do it yourself. Uh, there was another question I missed or? Good. Yeah. I, I misunderstood. Uh, so when you made the decision to allow other people to integrate altcoins, yeah. like, what, what, what did you have to actually do to allow that? And does that uh, bring in security vulnerabilities or? So if you want to, uh, so if you want to do your altcoin, basically you need to integrate to all parts of the stack that is used in BTC. I don't want to. I just want to. I, I just want to run it with Bitcoin. I just want to. I just want to understand if, by allowing this, this brings in any any security vulnerabilities or like what do no. you have to do to allow this to? No, because the, the way and Bitcoin work and the way it's architectured, uh, basically if you don't use the altcoin, there is no code pass that go to anything that is supported by the altcoin. So like there is no risk. And like, uh, as I will explain later, uh, even if I support altcoin, it doesn't mean that I'm downloading the node of the altcoin if you don't use it. Okay. All right. So I, 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 I continue because there is a... Oh, okay. It, oh, you got like, more. <laughs> it's like half, you know, I have still 30 minutes, so... For so it. Let's go deeper. So I was thinking, how should I do? But like, there's so many concepts. So like, I, d I did a kind of mind map. Don't be scared. It's actually easy. We'll go through all of it uh, about how everything works. Um, so everything starts with four command lines. So it's the simplest setup. As I say, you clone, you go inside, you set up some environment variable, you run btc setup setup.sh, and it just works. So, what does this BTC pay setup.sh do? Actually, it doesn't do that much. It installs Docker and Docker Compose for your system. Okay. It uh, runs a Docker Compose generator. I will 
code on this later. It creates the environment variable that are used by your containers. Uh, it makes sure that BTCP will restart if you reboot your machine. And it puts some tooling scripts inside your uh, USR bin. And it just starts the service. Actually, it's pretty small script, like 200 line of code or something like this. You can very easy to review if you want to check by yourself. Um, so it, expl it explains this part of the graph. So the BTCP setup generate an in en environment file. I will come later on this. And run Docker Compose Generator. I will explain what it is later. Uh, so after installing Docker and Docker Compose, we run Docker Compose, genera uh, we, we run Docker Compose Generator. What does Docker Compose Generator do? It generates a Docker Compose file. So for people who don't know what Docker Compose is, it's like a kind of like description of all the services that you want to run. And then with one line of code, you run them all and connect them together uh, easily. Basically, it's like infrastructure in, so, in a one configuration file. Uh, so the Docker Compose generator is like a tool I did by myself. It will, it will combine the btcp gen underscore environment variable that you set. And it will take inside the repository what I call Docker fragments, combine both of, both of them, and generate your Docker Compose generated dot, uh, dot uh, So for example, if I want, if I go back here, for example, when I, I'm setting up like several shitcoin, you can see that every name start with btcp gen underscore. So like, BTC page gen underscore is what define what will generate what we, what the final Docker compose will be. So like if you don't put do, uh, for example the third line BTC page gen doggy, it means that in your Docker compose, then you will never download uh, doggy coin uh, binaries and never run it. So like this Docker Compose generator just take fragments, your environment variable, combine them together and generate a Docker file that will represent, represent your service. If you want to run it by yourself, like you know, try, try to generate yourself your, this, you just set your environment variable and you can just run build.sh and see what it generates for you. And then you can audit if you want the, the Docker Compose generated. Then, when you, there is another tool that you run that is called, if you want to start BTCP, you run btcp-up.sh. Actually, it's like three line of code inside this script. The only thing it does, it just run Docker Compose on this file and like set up the environment variable that are set in the dot end that has been generated by the setup. So when you run the setup, there is a, this file, file that like, shows the environment variable of all the containers and this uh, Docker Compose, and then it just runs it. Uh, so like BTCP up, actually, just Docker Compose up, basically. So yeah, it explains a bit what's happening. The, the build. Dot, so in my graph, when you see like this color, red, actually it's the tooling that is shipped with BTCP when you run the, when you run the BTCP setup. And uh, so what's happening is that you run it, it generates, and uh, yeah, basically what I just explained to you, it explained all this part of my graph. Uh, and when you do BTCP up or BTCP down to you know, like uh, start BTCP or close it down. Actually, under the hood, it's just a Docker Compose up and Docker Compose down, like three line of code, that's it. So is there any question here? It's still not over, right? It's, okay, I hope I'm not killing you too much in, at the end of the day. Okay. Yeah, no, I guess you're good. I think you just okay. want to get drinks after, so you're good. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Um, 
So let's go deeper. I talked about Docker fragment, you remember? I say, this Docker Compose generator, take your fragment and your environment variable, melt it together and create this Docker Compose. So we'll just see what are those Docker fragments that I was talking about. Um, so actually, Docker fragments are like normal Docker uh, YAML file. Like, this is an example of Docker fragments from a BTC, BTC QuickBook plugin. So like Jeff uh, created a plugin in BTC Pay for having integration with QuickBook. So it's an example of fragment that he did. So like this fragment, for those of you that know uh, Docker Compose, it's like typical of a Docker Compose file. You define which Docker image that you want to reference. You define like the, you know, the environment variable that you want in your, in your image. Uh, so for example, this plugin depend on Redis. So he, he added a Redis, uh, a Redis dependency. And, uh, and that's actually it, actually. It's a uh, it's very simple file. For those of you that are familiar with Docker Compose, it's like normal Docker file. So like, there is two type of container type. There is, so there is one type, like here I create a new container because there is this image like node. So it means it's a new container. And so like Redis as well is a new container, there is image. But like here you might not see too well, but like you can see BTC pay server, but there is not the image node. If there is not the image node, it just means that I just want to modify the container that exists somewhere else. So in this case, in my BTC pay server container, I just want to add an environment variable like this. So like if this fragment is integrated into my deployment, then it, it, it will change my BTC pay server container that already exists and add two other containers, Redis and BTC Cubo. So like, there is lots of fragment actually in the, in the repository. You can review it by yourself. But like, for each shitcoin, for example, there is one fragment, of course. Uh, if you want uh, some plugin, so there is the QuickBook plugin, there is a LibPatron plugin, there is a WooCommerce plugin. So like, you can review it. They are, they are quite similar to each other and quite simple, actually. So like, Every time, you know, we, we reference a, a Docker image to see where are the binary we are running. So like, what are those Docker images? So actually in BTC Pay, we are using 37 Docker images maintained there by lots of different people. And it's not uh, always maintained by BTC Pay. That's why if you don't trust a shitcoin, don't use the shitcoin because actually we are not even reviewing it. Uh, so, Inside the Docker, inside the, our repository, we put like the description of all version of all the container, and we give the links, the GitHub links, and the and the Docker Hub links, to see uh, if you want to modify one. So, as a maintainer of my of uh, BTC Pay server, uh, BTC Pay server Docker, when I want to push an update to users, hear what I do. So like imagine that I, I want a new, I have a new version of my of BTC pay server and I want to push it to all BTC pay users. I just update my fragment and say, okay, I want a new version and I push the change and that's it. If my users want to update, then it's very easy as I will explain later. So when users want to update their setup, they run BTC pay update.sh, and actually, so if you use BTC Pay, when you click on the update button inside the website, it connect to SSH and just invoke this script. And actually, this script is not doing a lot. It's doing three things, like there may be four lines of code in it. It just do a git pull, okay? So I, I'm pulling the last change. I, I run the Docker Compose generator to be sure if they, there was no change in the generator. 
and I just do Docker Compose up. So Docker Compose up is just like you know starting the service that just change. So the nice thing is that you have very low downtime by doing this. You know, I'm not restarting all the programs if they are not impacted. So it's very useful. Like ver and very simple to understand. So in BTC Pay, there is no uh, there is no auto updates, and it's very important. One thing is that I tell to lots of merchants, if it's not broken, don't update it, because like I tell it that you, I might there might have more bugs. So if it works for you, you don't have to update. So I don't want to force them to update. Uh, it's also a systemic risk. Uh, for uh, for users, so imagine that lots of people depends on BTC Pay. They don't have to update, and a malicious actor gain access to my Docker uh, to my Git account. Then he can push an update to lots of people. If lots of people are using BTC Pay server, then we have uh, we are we are in uh, in trouble. Uh, it in incentivizes hackers to try to get it. Uh, and uh, as well, you know, very often I push an update and I go to sleep. And the morning, you know, at uh, at 10 a.m., I don't want to uh, open my mail with like 100, you know, angry merchants that I saying that I broke their store. So there is no auto updates. For now. I just want to confirm, kind of understand the threat model. So it, it, this is the normal like Bitcoin threat model, but then basically you have this extra component where you have all of these uh, packages that are maintained by various people, and essentially you 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 have to believe that those packages are okay, uh, as long as your your bitcoins are still in the system. You haven't sent them off to some wallet that's controlled outside. Is that correct? Yes. So it's vulnerable to that npm hack, like the oh, can I take over yes. your open source project? And yes. you're like sure, and then yes. like yeah. Okay. So that that that's why as well I want to explain how it works because some people th that might want to build upon BTC Pay or develop new service upon BTC Pay can say okay, we are doing our own curated curated environments that we peer reviewed ourselves, and that it's more maybe like it, you you feel more safe doing this. Than just trusting my my Docker image, so yes, uh, we are trusting a bunch of people, and it's uh, it's not it's not as it's not very good, but like, yeah, I, I want I want to other people to try to do their own fork and doing that kind of, of stuff. Yeah. So I see, I see you're you seem to be pulling images off of the Docker Hub, which is like somebody else built it. Is there a way to pr to avoid that so that it tries to build the images from source as much as possible? Yeah. So, so uh, actually, uh, um, in in the in the readme of the Docker comp uh, of the uh, BTC Pay Docker repository, I put the link to all the sources of all the images, and I also put. I also generate a script that if you want to build by yourself, you just have to run this script and it will build everything locally. Uh, that said, I don't use it very much, which means that maybe some images won't build correctly. I'm not sure. Uh, and also, as well, I got the problem, for, for example, LND recently become impossible to build the lat latest stable version because some, somebody in LTCD like just broke Make a force push on their repository, which broke like their the Go depth dependency hell, and uh, so the image exists on Docker Hub, but it doesn't mean that you can build it yourself, even if you have the sources. But I give access to the sources if you need to, if you want to do this. Yeah. Okay. So right, I we're continue. Good. Uh, tooling and configuration. Well, there, there is two more things. So I talk about the Docker fragments, but there, there is actually two more things that you can customize. One is the tooling. So, like when you install BTC Pay Server, imagine that you want to run command line on your uh, on your Bitcoin core. Actually, you have a small script that that is called bit BitcoinCLI.sh. It's actually just called BitcoinCLI inside your Docker your uh, container. Uh, so you can. If you want to do your own plugin, you can add this kind of tools. 
So there is lots of them, you know, like, it, it, it's in the repo, there is lots of them, you can review it. And, uh, well, I will bypass that, but basically when you do a BTCP update or BTCP setup, uh, I'm only installing in, in a slash user slash bin, I'm only installing what you are reusing. So like if you are not using DoggyCoin, you will not add DoggyCoin CLI.sh. Uh, you can also customize the uh, uh, engines configuration. So, so in front, in front of BTCP, there is Nginx. It's basically a reverse proxy for those that don't know. So what's happening is that the, re the HTTP request come to Nginx. It got Nginx like handle everything that is HTTPS related. And like depending on the request, it routes the, re the HTTP request to the right container. So like it's kind of like a router of HTTP requests. So you can customize the Nginx configuration to say, okay, if, if this HTTP request had this shape, then just route it to this service. Um, so yeah, there's two kind of configure, two kind of forwarding you can do on the Nginx. It's like, if you want to forward something based on the path, okay, or if you want to forward a request based on the domain. So for example, imagine that on the same machine you want WooCommerce and you want BTC Pay, you you will basically want two different domain based on this. So there is one way of doing this very easily. But imagine that, for example, you want, um, yeah, for, for those of you that use Lightning, for example, the, if you use C-Lightning and you want to use a Lightning charge, so, uh, or like LND, actually LND and Lightning charge are using the same domain name as BTC Pay. But the routing is done on the path. So like, if it starts like uh, btcpay.example.com, slash LND slash BTC. Actually, those requests will go directly to LND container. So you can do this kind of customization on this. Uh, so if you want to do customization, most of the, most of the time you don't need to, to modify this template, but it's inside production slash engines templates. And basically when it's a template, which means that it, so you have this template, you have this setup, and basically from this template, uh, this, so this template get copied to another folder. It's like stupid, like uh, legacy reason. And then this template, it gets, depending on the state of your service, it gets, uh, it generates your real engine conf config file. So it's like normally a default.conf for those of you that are uh, that know about it. So yeah, so if you want to debug, if you if you customize your own template and you want to debug it, you just run BTC pay and like you can just output what it has been generated by doing this command. Uh, uh, yes, so basically you can debug Nginx like this. So the template, the template language is a bit rough, but it's not very complicated uh, depending on what would you do. Uh, I won't go too much into the detail of this. Not only I don't have time, but maybe it's a bit boring for you. But here basically you have a paste-based routing. So like this piece of code, actually there's lots of verbosity, but it's quite easy. It says that for everything that go, so if you are using libpatron, for example, so you have your URL, patron.example.com. So for every request that go to patron, if the request starts with slash ISO, then it go to a certain container. So like it's a kind of example of paste based routing. So like, um, yeah, so like here, this part just means like if it go to the domain of Leap Patron, you, you can link that to the, to the uh, Docker fragment that I talked earlier. And then 
forward to this pass, uh, forward every request with this pass to this container. So like I, I, here, maybe, maybe later when you, you will have time to sleep, uh, it, will be, it will make more sense. But uh, yeah, basically it's, it's like quite easy. Uh, and actually, if you want to do a domain-based routing, you don't even have to change the template at all. Like for example, for libpatron, so you set up patron, you have patron.example.com, you have btcpay.example.com. Just by including those three lines, like you can say, uh, so basically what it means is that before running BTC pay setup, if you set up this environment variable, basically it's, it will root, so if this environment variable is like patron.example.com, every request going to patron.example.com will go to this container, to the container of uh, that has this rule, basically. So like actually, for domain-based routing, you don't even have to touch the templates. Uh, some question here? Any questions? Okay. No. I think I'm almost done, don't worry. I, I, I have one minute, so I will, I will go quick. Last thing is like the image creation process. So actually, BTC Pay is supporting Raspberry Pi. So how is it doing this? So if you go on the container, basically all images, uh, I, there is a mark if it supports ARM. So if it supports ARM, it means that it works on Raspberry Pi. Um, so how does it work? So, so this is good, Raspberry Pi. This is not good, not Raspberry Pi. So how does it, go? it work? So all images are, are pulled from Docker Hub. On Docker Hub, you can see like the tags that exist. So imagine that you want Bitcoin Core, for example. Bitcoin Core supports ARM, so it supports uh, support, uh, Raspberry Pi. So if you go to the, uh, to, uh, to the, oh shit. So if you go there, you can see different images. So ARM image and uh, 64 image and uh, the manifest image. So if you reference this image, basically your Docker comp uh, in, your, uh, in your Docker, that if you run it, on both uh, Raspberry Pi or X64, it would just work. They support both. I will go for uh, fast. So this is a multi-arc image. This is the architecture-specific image. Architecture-specific, you normally don't need it. So if I, my typical workflow when I want to push a new image, I just tag with the version and I push the tag. I go drink a tea and I come back. Why? Because the building process is actually handled by Circle Say Why. So Circle Say Why is just like, a, like Travis uh, that you are certainly using. So the script is quite simple. I just build the image and then I push to Docker Hub. Uh, there is a script in the, in, the, uh, in the GitHub. You can see it, but actually all my images are done like this. I build just by pushing a tag. So here is a simple step, if I push, then after later, it say, okay, in two minutes, I built my image. So it's quite quick in general. So yeah, it basically cover everything that I wanted to cover. I think it was a, maybe a bit too much for 45 minutes, especially I was, I, I didn't have too much, a uh, bit less time. And uh, yeah, I go quick because no time for question, I guess. <laughs> but, so if you want to join us, basically, like BTC Pay Server on Twitter, chat.btc Pay Server uh, on Mattermost, on Slack, on GitHub, on Mastodon. Uh, well, come join us. It's fun. If you want to develop your own like plugin, you can very easily. You can just ask questions there. Uh, we want you, Crypto Bro. Uh, it's a very fun place to be. So I hope you will come. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, oh, uh, we got one, one question, one question. Very quickly, can I plug your talk at London Bitcoin Devs on Monday and maybe briefly? Sorry? Uh, can I plug your talk at London Bitcoin Devs on Monday and um, maybe briefly talk about what you'll be doing on Monday? Oh, okay. So in the, the London Bitcoin talk, actually I want, I want to talk how to deploy uh, BTCP on Raspberry Pi, but it turns out that it's quite boring because actually I already told you the four line of code that works. The same four line works on Raspberry Pi. I just wanted to demo it. Uh, 
but then I, yeah, it's, uh, it's what, what I, I, I will talk more maybe in detail so all, everything has been done and how it works. But yeah, at least I want to demo this for real. All right. Awesome. There is there another question? I thought there was another one. No? Is there? Uh, there? Over there? All right. Last one. Ah. I can all be able to get through there. See you. Thanks. Hi. I was just um, very curious about you know, hearing what's the relation to the Bitcoin core node in B BTC Pay. Like, you know, if you're putting it on a Raspberry Pi, where does it validate the blocks? Where does it get the data from? Okay. Uh, so, if I understand your question, like if you put bit, uh, BTC Pay on a Raspberry Pi, how I'm getting the block from? Yeah. Okay, so it's running Bitcoin Core, really. So, like, it's just connecting to the network and, like, downloading the coin. Uh, but it's a good question because, like, actually what I, what I will also show in London, in, uh, in, uh, so death, uh, in the Death Talk, like, Monday, uh, if you run a Raspberry Pi, like it takes so much time, it takes like three weeks to sync the whole blockchain, so it's not, it's not good. So I have a solution for this that is called Fast Sync, where you do basically download the snapshot of the UTXO set at a certain point of time and then start syncing from this. And because BTC Pay support pruning and you have some option to run on low memory environments, then it, it can work. That said, like you still trust this UTXO set but I will explain as well in the, in the, in the dev talks uh, how you can validate by yourself that this UTXO set is, uh, is, is correct, like that I'm not malicious or something. All right, awesome. Thank you, Thanks. Nicholas. Uh, that was great. And uh, let's have a full round of applause for all of our speakers today. That was, uh, we had a lot of